This time I'd like to call the Monday, April 18th City of Vandalia Council meeting to order. We'll start with a moment of reflection followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Please stand for the pledge. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have no minutes to approve, and that brings us to communications, petitions, and awards. And at this time, uh, Mr. Wentz going to introduce and administer the oath of office to our new executive Assistant and Deputy Clerk of Council. Thank you very much, Your Honor. I'll introduce uh, Mrs. Angela Swartz. Uh, she is a U.S. Navy vet and recently worked at the uh, Montgomery County in the development <coughs> office. Uh, she's held several roles there and we're very excited to have her on board. Without further ado, I'll administer her oath of office. sports <clears throat> all right and at this time we have a proclamation to declare the month of May 2022 as bicycle month here in Vandalia and if I can ask mr. Smith to step to the podium you joining us this evening my pleasure all right well and I can't think of a better time to get into cycling than right now with the gas prices seem to be on the rise um, this is a perfect time to spend maybe a little bit more time riding our bikes and yeah uh, it's not only good for our for the environment but it's also good for your health and we appreciate everything you do with the bicycle committee here with the, the city of Vandalia and I know we started back in what 1995 incorporating cycling into our city and we've come a long way and now we've got the um, expansion of the bikeway coming up right, right now so it's an exciting time to be on the bicycle committee and again we appreciate everything you do for us in your committee and if you'd like well, to say a few and words. we appreciate the city support of the committee um, actually uh, today's weather was the reason why we make may bike month and not april <laughs> yeah we'll get out there soon and uh, we appreciate having the first mayor in my memory of, of Andy who was a bicycling mayor yeah. and I'm, I feel very lucky and also lucky to have Amber's support uh, actually uh, for a few years now uh, supporting the bicycle committee and we really appreciate that I want to invite everybody to our next meeting which will be uh, actually next Monday uh, four o'clock uh, in uh, the uh, the zoning and engineering office so uh, and appreciate uh, your attending uh, as you have in the past and even our city manager and uh, uh, Rob has attended and we really appreciate the support we get from the city of Vandalia. Thank you very much. All right. I thought at first you were going to challenge uh, all of our council members to try to ride at least 50 miles during May. Uh -oh. Well, not tonight anyway. <laughs> well, not tonight, but May. They got all the <laughs> yeah. month of May. Bob, can you ride a two-wheeler? Yeah. yeah, I can. Okay, well. Okay. They might be up to Great. it. Super. All yeah. right. Well, thanks again. Sure. My pleasure. Right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Get an e bike, 
Okay, we have no public hearing, and that brings us to comments from interested citizens. So if one would, someone would like to make a comment, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and your comments. Hi, good evening. My name is Ryan Reed with uh, DDC Management at uh, 3601 uh, Rigby Road, Miamisburg, Ohio. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. Um, I just wanted to talk about uh, one of the items before you tonight, um, the the townhome project. Uh, kind of just do an overview of the project and give a little background on it. Um, what we're proposing is uh, 87 owner owner occupied townhomes on 11.36 acres, with a total open space of about uh, 3.39 acres. Um, a little bit about the demographic there. Uh, we anticipate this to be first time home buyers that are looking for lifestyle living. Um, you know, young couples or, or small families that enjoy the, the public parks that the city already has to offer and wants to spend their time in the downtown communities. Um, the anticipated average price for these homes is in the upper twos. When we kind of look at the overall market in Vandalia, uh, three bedroom, two bath in the surrounding area over the last 12 months was selling at about 243,000 and uh, Vandalia on the whole over the last two months or 12 months has been 247. So these fit, you know, these are going to be above and beyond the existing inventory within the community. We believe that this plan aligns with the city's overall comprehensive plan for this, this piece of ground here. Um, it's called out to be medium density, um, and that fits squarely in the middle of what's allowable per the, the future land use plan at 7.66 acres. I believe it's actually a little bit on the lower end there. Um, and uh, the medium density also does specifically call out townhomes. So when we look at the future use plan for this site that the, that the city has put together, we're, we're really in alignment with it. Um, additionally, we're aligned with uh, Mulberry Road is anticipated to be uh, a thoroughfare, um, and we're aligning with the thoroughfare plan for that um, based on um, the Planning Commission and the staff recommendations to do those improvements, and that aligns with the current thoroughfare plan that's been adopted by the city. Um, I know there's been in the past some discussions really on traffic um, and the concerns around that. We've, we've done a little homework on that and identified in some preliminary traffic uh, counts per, per um, ODOT standards, their ODOT trip generation manual, that there would be, a, for this particular site, a total of 30 a.m peak hour trips and 39 trips in the p.m. peak hours. Um, this is so little that per ODOT standards, it wouldn't even warrant a turn lane analysis. We're actually talking in the peak hours of traffic, one car per two minutes at that in intersection. So it's something that's very low. So, so we believe that adhering to the city's thoroughfare plan um, fits, fits perfectly there. Um, there's been some, some additional concerns about sound um, from the freeway. Um, one thing I did want to clarify here is that this community does not back up to the freeway. It backs up to the airport access road and not necessarily the interstate. And that if you were to zoom out or look at an aerial, that part of the existing Copperfield community also backs up to this access road and, and does not have a sound barrier um, there protecting those homes. Um, using the same information um, from, from ODOT, we looked at what the trip counts or the traffic counts are along that access, the airport access road, and it's um, approximately less than 7% of what's actually on the interstate. So that, you know, the interstate is going by and you're having upwards of 80,000 cars um, on a daily basis there, and this is less than 7% of that. Um, the closest distance between a home and the edge of pavement there is approximately 150 feet. And so we feel like the things that we've put in our plan here, landscaping along that, that, uh, that buffer area there of that 150 feet, leaving the existing tree line, putting additional plantings in, putting a fountain in, um, help with the feel of the community there and give that buffer between the airport access road um, if we look at landscaping, we're planting um, trees within the community, um, street trees that are, are spaced out about 60 feet. And then we're also along Mulberry putting in a mounding and plantings there with various um, trees, uh, trees and shade trees there and evergreen trees. Um, 
and then lastly, you know, we want to talk about um, the HOA. You know, this entire community is a townhome community or plant, you know, is a townhome community where all of those HOA spaces um, are maintained by the HOA and the exteriors of those townhomes to make sure that there's, there's a standard that this community continues to live up to. Um, just kind of summing all of it up, I, I think we, we've presented a really good plan here that aligns with all the plans um, that the city has passed or plans to do for this particular particular piece of property. Thank you for your we time. We did discuss this for you know, probably a half hour today during our study session. Um, there was a lot of discussion around the, uh, the sound barrier and uh, Mulberry Road as a whole. So yep. I've been giving it a lot of thought. And I don't know if anyone would like to make any comments to anything yes, else. I, I got one question. Based on your business model, what is uh, what's the amount of years or time frame for a tool build up? Um, we typically try, we have investors that um, supply the equity for these projects and that their timeline is in, um, they need to, we need to be out in five to seven years from start of construction and closing on the ground to the last uh, lot sale. This community, because it is 87 units, we think that would be in the two, two and a half year time frame max. There was a lot of discussion around the sound barrier and the sound walls mm -hmm. and different options. Um, would you be willing to provide a sound wall or barrier that would meet the city of Vandalia specifications? At this, at, at this point, we can't, you know, that, that's not economically feasible for us. Um, we've looked at some preliminary numbers. Um, I guess my question would be, we, we would allow the city to, to install that if they were to use some type of TIF or tax abatement in order to capture that revenue and they wanted to install that sound barrier. Um, the existing Copperfield community has nearly the same amount of um, distance between some of those houses that we have in ours and, and, and the city hasn't required a sound wall there. Okay. All right. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Please remember to state your name and address. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Mark Fernelius, uh, 1232 Bramley Court. First of all, thank you all very much for your service on a the City Council here in Vandalia, great place to live. Again, thank you very much. So, uh, discussing the, the development, the PUD on, on Mulberry Lane there, again, just reminding you of the three major concerns for school populations, the deterioration, the future deterioration of the property, and the subsequent increased cost to the City of Vandalia. So, on the first point, we had seen some data that the school populations in Vandalia were declining over time. Since the last city council meeting, I've been in communication with the principal at Helke Elementary, and unfortunately, data sometimes has nuances that don't come out at first glance. And he provided some data that shows that there's actually an increase in the school population of Helke Elementary, which I thought was interesting, which would be located in the, the school where this development would be feeding, they would be feeding Helke Elementary, and that being the target population, we would see an increase most likely in the population of Helke Elementary, and it all is already increasing. So that is something to be uh, considerate of when considering this decision. Granted, that could be potentially mitigated by moving students to Demet, but it is currently increasing in Helke, and that's been over the last eight years is what he was, he was talking about. So that's the first concern. The second is the deterioration of the property. So last time I proposed requiring a brick front to prevent the deterioration of the property since currently it's planned to be siding on the front. And so I think that that should be a, a major consideration because I want to keep Vandalia an excellent place to live and maintaining a good feel and visual decor in the, in the properties surrounding, especially the rec center area, is very important. A third of all is the future cost that would, the city would incur as we heard in the, in the previous discussion in the study session, the traffic along that airport access road is, as well as probably 75 is going to be increasing due to multiple businesses coming in, developing there near the airport and increasing that traffic, which is only going to increase the noise. Now to address the, the point that 
Copperfield also is in that area. While true, Copperfield is much further north of the, of the freeway of 75, or 70, sorry, of 70 than this development would be. Also, with, with how Copperfield is situated, you only have a corner of top Copperfield touching the airport access road, which is on a diagonal going from the southeast to the northwest. So while I don't think it's completely accurate to say that Copperfield is in a similar situation because this development would lie right along the airport access road, whereas only the, cop the pond in the Copperfield neighborhood really lies along the, the airport access road. So I do think there's a considerable risk to the city having incurred costs. While at first, the buyer may be where and purchase the property with the current sound levels, as we know, they might not think about the increasing sound levels and then in the future, it becoming an issue and a request for the city council to then put in a sound barrier or other, other items. So I do think that's a, a major item of consideration. Overall, I think this is a great use for that property. If I were putting on my short-term vision hat and looking at one to two years, I'd say, yes, go for it, fits the plan. It, it would be a, a good use of that property. But if I look out 10 years from now and put on the long-term planning hat, I don't think we're quite situated to make that decision yet. I think considering more the deterioration of the property, you know, maybe doing a brick face, doing this, a sound barrier of some sort between whether it be a, a plant-based sound barrier or a wall-based sound barrier, doing that would, I think, prevent some future costs to the city. And then again, with the, the increase in, in students in the area, I think that needs to be teased out a little bit more because there's some nuances in the data that have just come to light. So thank you very much. And once again, thank you for your service on the city council. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Um, also, on the Mulberry development. Uh, state your name and address. Bo Schneider, 1160 Lansdale Court. I will back up right to this development. I'll say when we moved, we moved into Copperfield nine years ago. Uh, we moved there because it had the neighborhood that we were looking for, but also had the living in the country feel that we liked also. Um, we knew at one point the field behind us could become houses. That was always a, a possibility. We did not know that they would become townhomes or possibility of becoming townhomes. And I think most of our development is opposed to this becoming townhomes. We would like it to keep the same I don't know, housing development, you know, I don't understand why this became medium density when all in the past has been agricultural or low density. And now we've got all of Mulberry Road um, proposed as medium density, which Mulberry will not withstand that traffic. And I think we've talked on the points before that um, we don't even know if the farmland is for sale or that any of those properties are for sale over there. So. I just don't understand why it's changed the way it did. I, say, I think our neighborhood is fine with low density housing to keep it on the same um, plan as what we have. Um, I appreciate some of the concerns brought up before this that you've obviously listened to some of the citizens what they've said. Um, one thing that I was gonna say is the increased traffic in the development. Like I say, I live in the back when I wanna go North on Dixie, I go through the front so I can catch the light. I see, like you guys said, a lot of people doing the same thing, and that'll definitely bring increased traffic in our development. Um, I feel if there really is a need for this kind of development, um, aesthetically, I don't think where it's at is the best spot. I don't, um, I see maybe Dixie and Northwoods, um, those fields or National and Peters, the fields there, it's already set up. You got a major, two major roads instead of one in and out road in our development. Um, that's all I really have. I do thank you guys for your time and your consideration on this pro project. Thanks for your comments. You. Is there anyone else? While he's coming to the podium, I'd also like to ask if there's anyone online watching via Zoom. If you have comments, just raise your hand. Good evening. How's everybody doing? 
My name is Kenny Baumgartner. I'm at 31 or 6131 Ansbury Drive, Huber Heights. Um, I am currently the assistant produce manager at Kroger's. Uh, at Kroger's. Um, recently, I have been told that uh, they are going to transfer me to Piqua, and I don't want to go. Um, with that said, I have no choice. I'm going. Um, as occurred to me that Vandalia is grocery store poor. And uh, I believe that uh, Vandalia could use and support a second grocery store. And I would like to be the man who does that. Um, I have 50 years of produce background as well as grocery stores pretty much my whole life. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with uh, the internet, and, um, everything Vandalia. I've got over on in my hand 384 comments um, of keeping Kenny in yeah, Vandalia. Quite a, quite a support group here in Vandalia. Yes, and this is internet alone. Right. I have hundreds of other people that's coming in and wishing me luck and that type of stuff. So what I have proposed or thinking, and I'm probably premature on everything, I would like to try to open up a grocery store of my own. And uh, I've looked at a, uh, checked out a few properties. I'm looking at the Hawks Medical um, Supply there on National Road. And um, what I'm basically asking is for help, suggestions, point me in the right direction, anything that could uh, help me get achieve this goal. Um, like I said, Vandalia is grocery store poor. There's only one grocery store in the whole city. And uh, I think they're taking advantage of Vandalians. Um, I think that a second grocery store is needed. I think that uh, I could be the man who would do it. Um, I think that if nothing else, it would help drive down prices. Competition creates better prices for everybody. Um, other than that, I thank you for your time. Um, I have a copy of all the comments if anybody would like to see them. Sorry. Um, other than that, thank you very much. Well, I've certainly followed your, uh, your story on Facebook, and that's why I said that you definitely have a lot of support here. Um, what I would recommend you do is maybe contact uh, Mr. Wynn, our city manager, and you know, look at some economic development ideas and how we might be able to bring this to fruition. All righty. Sorry about that. We'd be happy to work with you. We certainly uh, try to support all of our entrepreneurs in town. And uh, likewise, we agree that uh, the city would benefit from having uh, other grocery shopping options within town. and. You know, I, I would also be fully transparent and read into the record that um, we've worked with individual chains on uh, on specific places. So uh, that's something that we're looking at in all directions, and we'd love to work with you on that as well, sir. All right. Well, thank you very much. Again, I appreciate your time. All right. Anybody want to see this? Or? Sorry, All right, well, thanks for coming. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment, either here or online? Moving on, moving on we'll go on to the um, city manager report where I don't see any information items or action items unless Mr. Wynn has something at this stage. None at this time, Your Honor. Okay. We have no old business, and that brings us to our first resolution of the night, that being resolution 22-R-36. Mr. McDonald, by title only. A resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a letter of understanding with the United States Air and Trade Show. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Thank you, Your Honor. Annually, the city enters into a letter of understanding with the U.S. Air and Trade Show. Uh, per the terms of the letter, the city agrees to provide police and city services and direct support to the 2022 uh, Dayton Air Show and being held this year on July 30th and 31st, and the city will be reimbursed uh, should services exceed $21,900. Do you have a motion? Make a motion to approve resolution 22R36. Second. 
I have a motion by Councilman Blakesley and a second by Vice Mayor Lewis to approve resolution 22-R-36 as presented. Are there any comments from Council? Call the roll. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Pollock? Yes. Councilmember Farst? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Good. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbst? Yes, the motion carries 7-0. Next, we have resolution 22-R-37. Ms. McDonald? A resolution waiving the formal bidding process and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with Pace Analytical Services, Inc. to provide EPA-mandated sampling and testing of sanitary sewer discharge from various industries and bacteria testing of drinking water in the city of Vandalia for calendar years 2022 and 2023. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Thank you, Your Honor. The resolution authorizes a two-year agreement with Pace Analytical Services for bacteria testing of our potable water system as well as wastewater sampling of required sites to meet our municipal industrial pretreatment program. In 2021, the city expended about $25,500 with Pace. The city has utilized Pace uh, out of Englewood for several years uh, for laboratory testing services, as does NAWA. We are able to drop off samples at NAWA when they're picked up uh, and they're picked up by PACE, thereby saving the city a service charge. When reviewing nearby laboratory facilities to get competitive quotes, the closest labs are located either in Dublin or Lima. Utilizing one of these facilities would require additional man hours for delivery or additional service charges for pickup. When testing is needed for an emergency like a water main break or boil advisory, these labs would not be as convenient. Therefore, I recommend that Council authorize this two-year agreement with PACE Analytical Services for the City's potable water and wastewater sampling and testing services. Thank you. Have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move to approve Resolution 22-R-37 as presented. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Pollock and a second by Councilman Blakesley to approve resolution 22-R-37 as presented. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Pollock? Yes. Councilmember Fires? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Hurt? Yes, the motion carries 7-0. Next, we have resolution 22-R-38. A resolution establishing the infrastructure fund. Thank you, Your Honor. The city has updated building fees to include a $1 per square foot infrastructure fee for commercial development. This fund will be created to track revenue and expenditures, including debt service, relating to improving and maintaining public infrastructure. Thank you. I have a motion. Move that we approve resolution 22R38. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Ehlers and a second by Councilman Pollock to approve resolution 22-R-38. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Council Member Pollock? Yes. Council Member Fars? Yes. Council Member Ehlers? Yes. Council Member Woods? Yes. Council Member Blakesley? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbst? Yes, and the motion carries 7-0. Next, we have one ordinance in its first reading, that being ordinance 22-15. An ordinance amending the Vandalia zoning code and map to include the Vandalia city center overlay. Thank you, Mr. Wendt. Your Honor, Vandalia City Council authorized staff to initiate an application for a zoning map and text amendment. The proposed zoning code amendment is for the purpose of creating a new overlay district, the Vandalia city center overlay, which includes its uh, Purpose, proposed location, uses, development standards, and applicability to other existing regulations. The Planning Commission voted 5-0 to zero to recommend approval of the proposed amendments to the city's zoning code and zoning map. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Make a motion that we approve Ordinance 22-15, first reading. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Blakesley and a second by Vice Mayor Lewis that we approve Ordinance 22-15 in its first reading. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Fars? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Pollock? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbst? Yes, the motion carries 7-0. We have one ordinance in a second reading, that being Ordinance 22-13. Mr. McDonald? 
an ordinance approving a planned unit development preliminary development plan and associated zoning map change for Copperfield Towns on lands generally located at 3330 Mulberry Road. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, let's see here. The applicant, DDC Management, has submitted an application requesting a planned unit development uh, PUD preliminary plan for a single 11 acre parcel located at 3330 Mulberry Road. The applicant is proposing to construct 87 owner occupied attached townhome units in both two unit buildings and three unit configurations. The site on the site with a density of eight units per acre, the proposal is consistent with the 2020 Vision Vandalia comprehensive plan. The Planning Commission voted four to one to recommend approval of the proposed uh, preliminary planned unit development plan with the following conditions. One, that the Mulberry Road right of way is improved in accordance with city code section 1234.09 Foxtrot on responsibility for thoroughfare improvements east of their entrance to ensure the city has infrastructure in place for future development and also Condition number two, instead of mulberry, instead of mulberry right-of-way improvements made west of their entrance, a vegetative screen with a variety of evergreen trees along the access road ramp to better increase sound dampening for the community and surrounding areas. There were several conditions which were bought, brought up. Uh, I would just also like to point out and uh, clear my name in stating that, oh, let's see here. I have, I have in your packet the school district projections, and uh, those are brought to you by grade. They do not state which schools they go through, but that was provided me, to me by the superintendent. And so those are the best figures that I have available to me, and I'd certainly be happy to look at any other figures, but I'm not attempting to be mendacious in this sort, but this is what was provided at my request by the school superintendent. At all? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Since this is an ordinance in a second reading, I'll open a public hearing. So if anyone would like to comment on this ordinance, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and your comment. That also goes for anyone listening online. If they would make, like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Being none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Your Honor, may I have a point of order? Um, may ask the city attorney if this motion would be tabled what would be the time to act upon it if indeed it can be tabled at this juncture it can be tabled typically you would table it to the next meeting but you could table it for two meetings or something like that or to a time specific or definitely well, I mean could you table it for 90 days Thank you. Yeah, Would seem suspicious. Well, yeah, I know on Robert's rules, I just wasn't too sure off the top of my head if there's, I don't believe we have any time frame to, to act on a PUD. So I think we would be able to table it for 90 days. Uh, given that, Planning Commission is your honor I'll move that we table ordinance 2213 in its second reading um, for a period uh, not more than 90 days for further consideration of landscaping, sound abatement, and possible uh, road development. Um, repercussions. I have a second. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Lewis and a second by Councilman Blakesley to uh, table 
ordinance 22-13 and its second reading for further considerations as noted. Are there any comments? And that was the table at not to exceed 90 days, correct? Right. Not to exceed no more than yeah. 90 days. Right. Yeah, if I can make a comment. Um, there's just some things we have to look at and if the development does take place that the city is ready from in my opinion mainly a road structure uh, plan to support the, the, the development so it's, it's not being outright rejected I think we just need some time I'm personally in favor of it I think we just need some time to uh, get our ducks in a row to support the vote understand any other comments? Call the roll. Council Member Ehlers. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Woods? Yes. Council Member Blakesley? Yes. Council Member Follick? No. Council Member Fars? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Hurst? Yes. And the motion carries 6 1. We have one emergency ordinance, that being emergency ordinance 22-14. Mr. McDonald. An ordinance approving individual assessments, um, assessment amounts and directing the finance director or her designee to certify the amounts to the county auditor for collection and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. Thank you, Your Honor. This emergency ordinance assesses properties for delinquent accounts relating to stormwater fees, trash collection, delinquent sewer, and water. Thank you. And since this is an emergency ordinance, we'll open a public hearing. So if anyone would like to make comments on this ordinance, please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and your comment. And if anyone is listening online and would like to make a comment, please raise your hand. Mr. McDonald. I just wanted to make one comment. Uh, you may notice in the um, exhibits are a little bit different this this time around than there last time, and that is because we are still in our ongoing uh, work with Montgomery County. They keep changing what they want with us. So you will notice that there will be exhibits A, B, C, D, which are very similar to what we're all used to, because we wanted to keep that so council has all the information that council wants, but there's also going to be a schedule one which has a year to date amount and some other things that the county requires. So it might be a little confusing when you see those things. And I just wanted to clarify what those were. Thank you. Uh, being none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move to approve ordinance 22-14 as an emergency. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Follick and a second by Councilman Blakesley to approve ordinance 22-14 as an emergency. Are there any other comments from council? Call the roll. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Pollock? Yes. Councilmember Pars? Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbs? Yes. The motion carries 7 0. That brings us to reports for, uh, from boards and commissions. We have a variance request uh, for non conforming use at 7615 Poe Avenue. Mr. Wendt? The applicant, Rush Truck Centers of Ohio Incorporated, has requested an expansion of a non-conforming use. The subject property is zoned highway business per city code table 1218-1 on principally permitted uses in base zoning districts. The use of truck and heavy equipment sales is listed as conditionally permitted within the office industrial park and industrial zoning districts only. The Board of Zoning Appeals voted four to zero to recommend approval of the requested expansion of the non-conforming use. Thank you. Can I have a motion? Your Honor, I'll move that we approve the variance expansion of non-conforming use at 7615 O Avenue. Second. I have a motion by Vice Mayor Lewis and a second by Councilman Bullock to approve the variance for expansion of a non-conforming use at 7615 Poe Avenue Road. Are there any comments? Call the roll. Councilmember Blakesley? Yes. Councilmember Pollock? Yes. Councilmember Fars? 
Yes. Councilmember Ehlers? Yes. Councilmember Woods? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Herbst? Yes, and the motion carries 7 0. Uh, Council, you've had an opportunity to review the Planning Commission meeting minutes of March 22nd. Are there any comments on those? And they stand approved. Next, we have the March bill listing in the amount of $1,726,006.07 and a list of the March expenses over $50,000. And we also have the March purchase card detail in the amount of $38,865.44. Comments on those? All right, and that brings us to council comments. We'll begin tonight with uh, Mr. McDonald. Nothing, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wynn. Nothing, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Ehlers. Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Councilman Foley. Uh, just one, and that's two. Um, Mr. Wynn communicated with us today, but I think a lot of us got phone calls from a resident late last week just to acknowledge and thank the uh, Division of Fire uh, for working with that resident and finding a solution uh, through other community partners to to help uh, eliminate that situation that he was having. So I think it goes to show I me mean, it's not something that's traditionally a city issue or, or um, problem, but I think it shows that uh, all of our departments will reach out and, and help residents uh, work through that situation. So um, Mr. Jacobs and the rest of the fire division, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Barst. Um, just that I miss you all and wish you were here and I'm glad I wasn't there for the snow this morning, but that's all. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, Councilman Blakesley. Just to welcome Mrs. Schwartz aboard and looking forward to working with you. That's all I have. Councilwoman Woods. Nothing tonight, thank you. And Vice Mayor Lewis. None this evening. I have no comments. Uh, we have no executive session, so this meeting is adjourned and we will resume our normal study session.